McHale who gets a catch. He's got patrol. live at George Smith Field on the campus of Matamidi High School in Matamidi, Minnesota as the final round of the Metro East Round Robin ends with Hill Murray taking on the Matamidi Zephyrs. My name is Jeff Disher, we welcome you and uh, the first time the, the Matamidi Zephyrs and Hill Murray Pioneers took uh, to the pitch they uh, or the pioneers rather uh, defeated Hilmer or defeated Matamidi by a count of one nil on September 24th, and that brings us here to a point where Hill Murray Number is five one and three on the season uh, after drawing against ha both Hastings and Henry Sibley, but Matamidi has uh, been unbeaten in two of their last three games. Matamidi's record at home is a solid two and zero. Oh. Uh, and they have a winning record against teams with a winning record at 4-1-1. One, one. Matamidi is scoring one, just over one more goal than they allow. Hill Murray on that front, scoring three more goals than they allow. Hill Murray, 2-1-1 one one on the road. And Hill Murray's record with teams, or against teams with a winning record would be 2-1-3 and three on the season. That, uh, in terms of the conference, will end this evening. Introductions for Matamidi going strong as we bring you a 70 degree night here in Eastern or the Eastern Metro with a Southwest wind at 14 miles an hour, which could affect ball flight somewhere down the line. You see there, Joji or Audrey Berry rather. Uh, in three games this year that have been noted. She has four goals, no assists on the season for Audrey. Starting goalkeepers, uh, we believe, speaking of Matamini, that Paige Jensen will get to start junior goalkeeper for the Zephyrs. And on the flip side for Hill Murray, we believe Natalie Humbert will get to start sophomore goal ten, er, goalkeeper for the, the Pioneers. Hill Murray leads the Metro East Conference with a 5-1-3 and three record as you see Simbo and Daye there on your screen talking to his charges before we get underway. Matamidi on the flip side, 5-1-1. One one. They are third in Metro East and fourth in Class Single A. There is Dave Wald, his 15th season with the Zephyrs. And so you see Walt on the screen there. And we'll bring you sort of up to speed on the Metro East Conference Tournament uh, thus far. They play, or uh, the top four seeds and bottom four played two rounds already on September 29th and October 2nd. In the round on 
the 29th, Hill Murray and Hastings drew one all. Matamidi Henry Sibley drew nil nil. On the 2nd of October, Hill Murray and Sibley drew nil nil. Matamidi defeating or defeated Hastings on that night two nil. In or on what we'll call the bottom four with Simley, South St. Paul, Tartan, and North St. Paul. Simley defeated North St. Paul September 29, 9-0. South St. Paul with a 3-2 win over Tartan. Simley defeated Tartan on October 2nd. South St. Paul put the wood, we'll say, to North St. Paul 10-0 on that night as we are ready to get underway with our final game of the evening as Hastings and Henry Sibley just played. Hill Murray will kick off and we're underway. Up on the far side, the ball delivered up the far touch line and still in play as the team or the uh, squad spar for it. Ball kicked out of play and a throw in will go the way of Matamidi. Ball on the far side of the field. Hill Murray with the possession here in the early 30 seconds as they're still sparring for it. Up the near side, the ball kicked on and out of the reach of Laney Paddleford. Throw in on the far side for Hill Murray. Lucy Zupfer will take it. And the ball immediately given to Erica Broughton. Broughton threw that one on to Lindquist, and Lindquist shot, hit the corner of the post, and stayed out. Out of play it goes. Matamidi will keep possession. We'll get a replay of that shot from Lindquist, or uh, check that. It was Audrey Berry with the shot off the corner of the iron, and the iron was unkind. Waiting for a whistle. We get that whistle. And the throw in for Campbell Waldsberger. All kicked on. As giving chase there was Kate Hulse. She's shoved off the ball. And I do believe a goal kick will occur. It will. Natalie Humbert will boot it back into play. And the ball headed down by Bielk, or Bualki. Over far side of the field and still in play somehow. Hill Murray with possession as they advance up towards midfield. About two and a half minutes played. These two teams still figuring each other out as Humbert will send that one forward. And out of play right at the midfield stripe for Matamidi to bring in with a throw. Short throw eventually getting to Broughton. And out of play to Hill Murray. Over on the far side, that one rainbows down and the Pioneers will control this at midfield. Zupfer, near side, got it taken, or had it taken away from her by Bwaki, and Bwaki's pass inside the box, quick shot, and a goal for Matamidi. <laughs> Believe it was Audrey Berry, will get a second look to make sure of it. And Humbert got a hand to it, but it was not enough. Here's the lead pass in, and that is Barry with the shot. You see Humbert getting a hand on it, but she needed another one to keep it out. Audrey Barry with a goal and a 1-0 lead to Matamidi. Scoring for the Zephyrs, number two, Audrey Barry. out of play and I believe Hill Murray will maintain control. They do with the throw in on the far side of the field. Brought inside the 18 yard box and immediately 
dispatched out of play by the defensive forces of the Zephyrs. Long throw inside the box and Matamidi will control on the far side of the field as they look to maintain the one nothing lead and the momentum. Out of bounds though to Hill Murray as we are just over four minutes in. So the goal coming from Barry in the third minute gets us to where we are. As this one up the far touchline, still staying in play until just there. As Matamidi will maintain the field position and possession. Ball chested down. And this one almost to Lindquist before it was stolen from her. And upfield come the Pioneers. Hill Murray, 5-1-3 on the young Metro East season looking for their uh, six or seventh result that isn't a loss in succession. Matamidi 4-0-2 in the last six entering play tonight and their last loss was on September 8th against Hastings. Matamidi struggling to maintain possession in the midfield area. There's a ball taken up high. It'll go to Hill Murray. Once possession is reestablished. So a free kick coming. Underway we go back. Matamidi with possession on the near side. This is Bwalki. Bwalki centers and gives possession right back to the Pioneers. Up the field they go. And that one just out of the reach of Laney Paddleford goes over to Lindquist, who picks up the trash. Lindquist looking and finding Wolfsfeld, or Wolfsfeld, and the ball dribbles back towards midfield, where Paddleford will send it forward. Broughton, center of the field, and shimmying around one is Lindquist, but she couldn't get around two and produce a shot. This goes to Luger. And upfield we go. Back to the midfield area. Matamidi establishing possession. And the majority of the possession in the first seven minutes has been in Hill Murray's defensive end. We've not seen, we've hardly seen Hill Murray realistically go to work for more than about 30 to 45 seconds at a time. Ball taken up high by a pioneer as it's still pinballing outside the box. And the Zephyrs will finally control. Long shot blocked on the way in. And still in play on the far side. Where'd that go out? It went out and Hill Murray will control. Upfield quickly. And back to midfield. Lindquist will find it, but she couldn't corral. Here come the Pioneers with speed. And it goes back to Lindquist on the far side. Lindquist, nifty give, give and go, gets through one, does she? And actually, that's Lindquist getting it back. So I believe that was Wolfsfeld on the far side. As this one goes to Paddleford. Paddleford looking for a, a cross. Quick shot in the box, still loose and covered by Humbert. play here of the last offensive sequence from Matamidi. The centering feed from Olsfeld. Got over to Bucky and Humbert lays down. Matamidi still applying pressure. 31 minutes to play in the opening half. 
as Bwalki crosses far post and it wouldn't work. Over to the far side in play, Matamidi with possession, quickly sent in. As if the Zephyrs are looking to say that Hill Murray cannot have any offensive possession with which to work. The Pioneers throw this one in the, on the far side, I should say, as it still pinballs over on the Hill Murray bench. In play it goes via a throw in for Hill Murray. Back in, it will go to Luger, and Luger up the far side. And now Hill Murray working with possession of their own. Ball thrown in towards Luger. And now Hill Murray trying to get out of a maze like a rat, unable to do so, as Matamidi with possession. That's Bwalki over on the far side, delivers and across towards Barry, but not quite there. Shot in and gloved by Humbert. Now the ball bounces at midfield. Matamidi regaining, or uh, actually trying to corral possession. They were unsuccessful. Substitutions for Matamidi will see Caitlin moltz on and Kate Holst re-enter the fray. So a throw in on the far side for Hill Murray. And the Pioneers will give possession back to the Zephyrs. Near side now, as this one is kicked on by Moldzon. And in play, Hill Murray will regain possession at midfield. Ball brought back in by Lindquist. And a long shot, tried that again. And that same post denies the Zephyrs and Barry once more. We'll see that long shot, and it was actually Broughton that was denied by the post as that ball just had a little bit too much curl on it. Hill Murray with possession. Off of a throw-in. I believe that was Bridget Blaney if I... Uh, Recall that correctly. Quick whistle stopping play. Hill Murray with possession once again. And a free kick on the way. Ball kicked on towards the top of the box. It would not work. Matamidi looking to get out of trouble, they do. Across the midfield stripe with Broughton. And now that pass near Broughton, but just out of her reach. And on the near side, ball capped in, or was it? They give the ball to Hill Murray on the near touch line. Now dribbling upfield is Brooke Nast. Nast delivers one to Runyon, and Runyon comes forward with a little help. This is Nast on the far side, but the ball out of her reach. And Paige Jensen will boot it back into play. with a throw. And the Pioneers coming forward. Now back towards midfield, Matamidi reverses course. And a 
game of Pong is played that Atari would appreciate as this one comes to Nast on the near side. Brooke Nast looking to get through three and she can't do that. Has to have a little help from her friends and got it in the form of Sarah Luger. Luger with a shot, curling and in on goal. Would have had to start that ball out a long way from the, the post to get a curl like that. Didn't quite work for Luger in that situation as this is picked back up by Runyon. Runyon delivered one, intended for Luger as Runyon trying to settle things down for Hill Murray. She does with a little help. Right in the midfield circle, Matamita will take control. Upfield go the Zephyrs. And this is Paddleford. Paddleford rejected as it's still in play. I'm sure the pioneer on the near side there, Luger, thought it was going out of bounds, so she didn't react right away. Luger, in on goal, she needs to shove down after the ball left, but the ball is in the goalkeeper's hands. Loose ball in center, this goes to Runyon. Up the far side to Andruzic. Out of play to Hill Murray. Matamidi wanting to make a substitution here in short order. And a free kick on the far side to resume play. Short kick and a low kick that it left the ground. Matamidi now out of trouble in the corner, but Hill Murray with possession. A throw in there from Blaney, high into the box, headed away, corner kick should be coming. and it will be for Hill Murray. Taking the corner for the Pioneers is Maya Geese. And Geese goes short and gets it back as she dribbles into the box. Geese with a shot and it wouldn't get through. Second effort goes in, tie game. But Geese looked to get the rebound back off the deflection from the Zephyr defense. Here's the short corner, block. Geese from a short angle. Murray as this one is kicked on by Nest. Substitutions for Matamidi. Tyval, Selman, and Brooke and uh, did not ca actually catch the last substitution for the Zephyrs as this one is kicked on by Lucy Zuppert. Hill Murray now providing pressure from Kate Olson as they still spar. Ball headed down by Blocky as Matamini needs to reverse course and quickly. 18th minute about to expire. And coming up field is Blocky. Blocky got it to Hillstrom. 
and Hillstrom, Hillstrom ran into a brick wall, or what seemed to be a brick wall. Up the far side, Hill Murray coming back towards midfield. Out of play, substitu substitutions coming for Matamidi. Pioneer substitution number 14, Lozano. Zephyr substitutions number two, Barry, number 11, Hillstrom, and number 18, McCoy. Uh, Maddie McCoy and Annabelle Hillstrom among the substitutions for Matamidi. And Claire Lozano, the lone substitution in that sequence for Hill Murray. 21 minutes to play in the opening half. Hill Murray comes up on the, on the near side, I should say, Nast with it. Out of play, she'll throw it in. And now upfield come the Zephyrs, just out of the reach of Audrey Berry, who had Matamidi's opening goal, and the opening goal of the game, whistle blows the play dead. And a free kick coming the way of the Pioneers. This will go to Maya Geese. Geese curls one into the box. And picked up on the far side. Hill Murray maintains possession with substitutes coming in. And actually will blow off the substitution with a quick throw. Out of play for a goal kick. Option. Now the subst now they're warning substitutes are Hill Murray. Be alert. And that'll happen now. Pioneer substitution number 18, Werner. Uh, Molly Werner, the substitute coming on for the Pioneers. Halfway through the opening half, or a quarter of the way through the game as well. Hill Murray now providing pressure that they simply did not in the opening 10 minutes, or the opening five minutes, I should say, as it was all Matamidi. And now Hill Murray decides to get off the bus and find their legs, tying the, the score at one. <laughs> Option. Free kick coming for the Zephyrs. Not, now it's too late. Haley James, it looks like, and it is. James boots it back into play. Just out of the reach of Kate Holst. And in play still. Matamidi regaining possession and out of play for a goal kick. Humbert will kick that ball back into play. And the Pioneers will come back upfield. But only as far as the midfield strike. All pinballs towards the 18 yard box. And back to midfield. Luger. Kicks that one on, has a man in stride. Over to the far side, it looks like Lozano. Lozano looking for a cross. And they have to abandon that strategy until just there. Just out of the reach of Blaney. And back towards midfield, Hill Murray settles it down. Zupfer kicks it back in towards Luger. Luger looking near side and in play. Luger wasn't looking for that pass, but or alas, Hill Murray has possession once more. Luger 
switches fields, and Mount Amidi holds possession. Ball kicked up field. This game uh, back towards more of a midfield battle after the opening two goals. One all our score as Hill Murray regains control. Near side, just out of the reach of Nast. And Hill Murray will throw the ball in. I believe that's Zoop for it is. Bottom Eye getting substitutes ready as it comes back to Nast up the near touchline. Nast crosses low and a quick shot in from Runyon is saved by Jensen. A high kick, not real long per se, headed down by Nast and out of play. Four substitutes coming on for Hill Murray we, at the next stoppage as this one is thrown in by Zupfer. Out of bounds and substitutes coming on include Mickey Stockness for the Zephyr Zephyrs. Substitutions number one, Padilla Ford, number nine, Bielke, number 10, Stockness, and number 19, Waldsberger. Campbell Waldsberger also among the substitutes as is Laney Paddleford. Up field they go to the Zephyrs, and this is Hillstrom up the far side. Got it to Audrey Berry. Berry dumped it off. Over to Wolfsfeld, and Hill Murray advances back up towards midfield. Trading possession are these two teams in a game that Atari would appreciate as this one is centered, or should say crossed, by Wolfsfeld. And crossed to the far touch line. Out of play. Ticking down to the 14 minute mark, as I believe it will be Matamidi throwing the ball back into play. Ball pinballs just outside the box. and it'll be controlled by Luger. Luger upfield. Finds Lozano. And Luger keeps it alive with the midfield strike. Matamidi will actually gain possession. Upfield they go. Race to the ball, won by Matamidi. And they'll turn it around near side as this one is found by Wolfsfeld. Luger outrunning everybody here on the near side in this exchange. Runyon has it stolen from her and it's picked up by Balki. Balki's pass was intercepted and now this goes to Nast on the near side. Matamidi coming back up field as this goes to Buelke as she gets around one, ball out of play. And Matamidi will regain control. Zephyr's substitution number six, Lindquist. Pioneer Lily Lindquist substitutions number three, Olsen. And enters number the game for Matamidi and Kate Olsen among the substitutes for Hill Murray. Ready to go. Paddleford will throw that ball back into play. Right near Lindquist, who was unmarked at the time of the throw. Out of play. And it will go to Matamidi, despite a flag not indicating either way. Matamidi working their way back up field, and we're looking for a second goal of the night. Would be 
third overall. We're looking for a team's second goal. Crossed by Bucky right into the net. I believe the ball was untouched. Bucky. Get a replay to be sure. This goes to Balky just outside the or just inside the box. A lot of curl and right over the outstretched arm. 2-1 Matamina. Caitlin Balky with the second goal for the Zephyrs. Now Hill Murray playing on the back foot like they did to open the contest. Ball still pinballing at midfield. Scoring for the Zephyrs, number nine, Caitlin Bunky. And now Matamidi with possession. Balky will send that or will settle it down near near uh, the near corner. And Matamidi looking to extend their lead. Inside the box they go. And a save, or was it? It was saved by Humbert. Incredibly. Almost wasn't. Here's the shot from Lindquist, or actually Lindquist was upended. And a quick shot, top of the box, saved by Humbert. And now Humbert kicks the ball back into play towards Luger and eventually given on to who I believe was Nast. 10 minutes 13 to play in the opening half as the ball settled down. And thrown in by the Pioneers. And now the ball chased back into the Hill Murray end, save Humbert. Luger trying to settle things down as the wind picks up. Matamidi playing with control. This is Lindquist. Cross right to Humbert. Matamidi looking for more, but the pass intercepted as the Pioneers work their way upfield. Luger, pass intercepted, and now Matamidi working on the near side as that ball is kept in by Hillstrom. Out of play to Hill Murray. Throwing the ball in for the Pioneers is Lucy Zupfer. Right to Luger. Zupfer kicks it on. And now a race to the ball. Won by Matamidi, but it'll drift out of play. Goal kick, I believe, was called as we tick down or into the 33rd minute almost. Pioneer substitution, Rudnian. Was it Ella Runyon? Yes, it was. Ella Runyon, the, the latest substitute for Hill Murray. Is that ball headed on? Pinballing. Runyon boxes out. And Hill Murray with control. Matamini does a box out of their own as Pong is being played near midfield. Quick shot by Walkie looking for goal number two.
And did she get it? I didn't see it go in. It did not, and it leads to a corner. The way Omari reacted there weren't sh or wasn't sure. However, corner, short corner from Mount Aminai. Oh no, in play on the near or on the far side. Matamidai will pick this one back up. And Hill Murray has possession. They're down 2-1, late stages, first half. Jeff Disher here with you on a beautiful night from Matamidai, Minnesota. Matamidai with possession and the lead. Kicked on by Jensen. Rainbows across the midfield stripe. As Hill Murray will settle this one down with Zupfer. And it'll be kicked on. Out of play, should be Matamidai ball, and it is. Six minutes and change left in the uh, big, or the piggy bank, I should say. Uh, here in the first half. This goes to Barry, opening goal of the match was Barry's on an absolute lightning bolt. And now Hill Murray on side as they enter the box. Bodies fly, no call. Advan actually, I thought I saw a signal for advantage for Mount Amidai. Still in play on the far side, and I believe we're still in advantage for Matamidai for a foul in the far box. Hill Murray with possession as they regain with Runyon. Runyon looking to get around one, Sutter steps around one. Runyon looking for a cross opportunity, blocked off. And it will be a corner to Hill Murray. Badger, stay there. Ball's gonna hang up, bud. Taking the corner will be Maya Geese. As you see Dave Wald in his 15th season. Corner belted in. Headed down just outside the box. It's still loose. As the Zephyrs try and clear, they will out of play to Matamida. Four minutes and two dimes remaining in the opening half as a quick throw accelerates things. Back towards midfield we go. Hill, or Hill Murray looking for a goal to tie. Zupfer with it here as it is advanced back to Geese. Up the far side they go, out of play to Matamidai it looked like. Quick throw over on the far side. And Hill Murray plays stalwart defense there, allowing a Matamidai throw as we tick in to the last three minutes and 35. Or thereabouts. Out of play on the Hill Murray bench. Pioneer possession. Blaney will throw this one in. Blaney goes down the line with it. Believe that's Luger. Couldn't get past two, but somehow the ball got through. Broughton with control for Matamidai. as we are in the 38th minute. Near side, controlled and kept in by Nast for a moment. Matamidai throw to Paddleford. Paddleford rainbows one. That bounces down and settles down towards Luger in midfield. Race to the ball, won by Matamidai. 
and the Zephyrs looking to go to the uh, locker room, so to speak, with a 2-1 lead. Two minutes and 20 away from doing just that. Whistle stopping play. Hill Murray with uh, free kick coming. The Pioneers looking for a substitution here in the final or in the latter stages as we tick down past the two minute mark. Free kick on the way. Down towards the Pioneer bench. And out of play. Will we get that substitution? We will. Minute and three quarters. Pioneer substitution number five, Kavanaugh. Abigail Kavanaugh, the substitute for the Pioneers as we tick into the last 90 seconds. Bottom eye with the ball near midfield as they turn it on. This goes to Wolf, towards Wolfsfeld and advance back up to midfield. Hill Murray looking to or looking for one more scoring chance. Out of play it goes to Matamidi with a minute and some change remaining in the bank. One minute remaining in the half. Matamidi with possession near side as it comes over to Hillstrom. Touched on towards Wolfsfeld. Wolfsfeld looking for a teammate who's not off in an offside position as Wolfsfeld gets it back. Near the box, that ball kicked on towards Luger. Hill Murray with possession and 33 seconds to work. This goes back to midfield and Matamidi looking to button things up a little bit on the far side. Touched on to the midfield stripe and almost a mistake, but Barry, or uh, Joji Berry there to pick up the trash, so to speak. Ten. Ten nine, seconds remaining in the half. Eight, Hillstrom seven, six, kicks this one, five, one on. Four, and three, that should do two, it as a kick one. from Blaney will end the opening half. At the end of 40 minutes, it is Matamidi two and Hill Murray one. Halftime activities will commence next. And you are watching Girls High School Soccer on SCC Sports. My husband is a wonderful man. He's a great father, funny and loving when he's not drinking. When he drinks, he becomes a complete stranger, angry and mean, not the man I fell in love with. I've become really good at pretending everything's okay for the kids' sake, but it's taking a toll on me. I'm so angry that my husband chooses alcohol over us. If he really loved us, he'd stop drinking, right? My counselor suggested I try Al-Anon family groups. At first, I didn't understand why she wanted me to go. I'm not the one with the problem, but I'm glad I went. I heard people's stories, and they sound exactly like mine. I knew I was in the right place. Do you worry about how much someone drinks? You are not alone. Al-Anon or Alateen can help. For more information, call 1-866-200-0033 or visit alanon.org slash hope. I'm a veteran. We hit a mine in Vietnam. When I came home, I didn't know where to turn. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. My victory's been never giving up hope. My wife is always there to remind me we have a life to live. DAV provides a lifetime of support, helping veterans of every generation get the benefits they've earned. I am a veteran, but after I got out, I spent two years alone and homeless. Every year, DAV helps more than a million veterans so they can reach victories great and small. My victory was finding the support to get back on my feet. Now I'm getting things right with my family. I finally admitted with my PTSD, I wasn't doing well. But there's more to be done and more victories to be won. Now I wish I'd found DAV sooner. I am a veteran. My victory is just enjoying each day. Help support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org.
the millions of people who either physically or financially do not have access to health care are staggering. And I think that's part of what makes it beautiful is people come here with just a heart to serve and a heart to make a difference. To open my eyes to these people who truly have no options and are helpless to do anything for their condition. People who have been told no their whole lives can finally be told yes. It's life changing. Chiru has no choice. She and millions like her must walk miles every day for dirty water. But together, we can end their walk by providing clean water close by. Instead of spending hours walking to get water that makes them sick, girls can be in a classroom that expands their minds, and moms will gain back time to care for their families. Sons and daughters can grow up strong, finally free of sicknesses caused by dirty water. At World Vision, care about clean water runs deep. Deep enough to reach one new person with clean water every 10 seconds. Because every child, every person, everywhere deserves clean water and the chance to rise to their full potential. It's true, when you just add water, you change a life. Learn more at worldvision.org. George Smith Field on the campus of Matamidi High School here in Matamidi, Minnesota as the Zephyrs lead the Hill Murray Pioneers 2-1 at halftime of the final game in the final round of the Metro East Girls Soccer Tournament for 2020. You see the Matamidi coaching staff going over uh, concepts for the second half with a one goal lead that would be very different than what you would see on the Hill Murray side of things as uh, Hill Murray took the first five minutes to kind of come into the force so to speak before the Zephyrs got a goal from it was not Humbert here's uh, Barry's opening goal or actually, we'll check that. It was Audrey Berry. Or this is the opening goal from Audrey Berry. Uh, well done to the uh, the one who thinks much like I do. This is Hill Murray's goal. As that was sent in and deflected. And I believe that was... Or actually, we might want to run back to Hill Murray goal as this uh, second goal from Balky put Matamidi back up 2-1. Uh, and that is where we are now. I saw the Hill Murray goal become deflected. Not sure where the deflection came from. Thus, unsure of the Hill Murray or the second goal scorer for Hill Murray there. As you see Simbo, or Simbo and Daye and the Hill Murray Pioneers, we show you the Class A rankings. Uh, in Class A, Matamidi sitting at fourth in the or in the class at 5-1-1. One, one. Hill Murray seventh with a 5-1-3 and three mark. And the difference being that Matamidi has played two less games due to having home games against North St. Paul and Tartan both postponed. Uh, otherwise, we could be looking at a very or a vastly different top five in that sort of table. Benilde St. Margaret's leads that with a lone loss. Holy Angels, perfect 8 0 on the season thus far. Blake sits third at eight, eight wins, a lone loss, and a lone draw. We also give you the Class A QRF ranking with Benilde St. Margaret's, Blake, and Matamidi separated by four percentage points. 
uh, in that ranking, Cloquet Carlton and Hiawatha Collegiate uh, bringing up the fourth and fifth spots with Holy Angels, Tatino Grace, Winona Cotter, Duluth Marshall, and Marantha Christian in the six through 10 positions. Hill Murray, or uh, Matamita, I checked that, leads Hill Murray 2 1. We'll take a quick timeout. Second half action on your way shortly. Food, it brings us together, inspires joy, and gives us life. But we can't forget that during this crisis, over 37 million people don't have access to nutritious food. That's one in 12 seniors and one in seven children. In fact, millions of kids aren't able to receive a free or reduced price school lunch right now. The good thing is, we can all help. Learn how you can get involved at feedingamerica.org. When we help each other, we nourish ourselves, our families, and our communities. Learn to cough and sneeze with your pal, Grover. <laughs> Step one, realize you're about to sneeze. <laughs> Step two, move your elbow toward your nose and mouth. Step three, gazoon tight. One, two, three. <laughs> Remember to cough and sneeze into your arm or elbow and not your hands. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. is the place that our nation has set aside for Vietnam veterans. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund the nonprofit organization that built the wall works to ensure the long-term care and preservation of the memorial site, including the wall, the three servicemen statue, and the in-memory plaque. The memorial fund adds names when they're authorized and updates status symbols when our missing are recovered. We provide for publishing the name directories, clean the statue and plaque, plant new bushes, and install lighting systems. The Memorial Fund's efforts will ensure a long future for this integral part of our nation's history. This memorial must continue to stand so their service and sacrifice is never forgotten. Help us keep the promise the wall was built on. Never forget. Visit vvmf.org to find out how you can help. Back for the second half of play in Matamita, Minnesota, as the Zephyrs lead the Hill Murray Pioneers 2-1 through 40 minutes. Jeff Disher here with you from Matamita High School and George Smith Field to be a little bit more accurate as you see Simbo and Daye on the Hill Murray sideline with his his charges down a goal. After the opening half of play, Matamita will get us underway with a kickoff here momentarily once the whistle goes. Right on cue, there goes the whistle. And the Atari-esque game of Pong to start play once again. Matamidai with control and Balki who has one of the two Matamidai goals thus far. If you're the Zephyrs, you'd think you would want a third goal to just add to the insurance, as it were, with uh, this matchup being the last uh, tops or at least top side uh, match in the Metro East round robin style conference tournament. Throw in for Hill Murray, who go left to right on your television screen. Matamidai going right to left. Realized I didn't do that in the first half. So you know what? Better time, or better time to do it now than to not do it. So there you go. Hill Murray advances the ball. Up the far side, Luger in play? No. Although it was last touched by the Zephyrs, which gives Hill Murray the throw on the far side. Cross into the box. The ball settled down. Matamidai with control. As 
as this one is advanced. Taking a tumble would be Seelman. Incidental contact as, that, as there was ball to ball contact prior to Seelman doing a cartwheel into the turf. Out of play, Hill Murray with a throw in, courtesy of Blaney. Into the box it'll go, and Matamidi will kick on to restart play. Here come the Zephyrs. This one kept in by Waldsberger. And now the ball kicked on by Stockness. Waldsberger gets past one up the near side. She goes and a pass to a pioneer as this one is worked ahead by Luger. Pushed down. We will play on. I don't believe, don't believe it was seen as we play as we do play on. Runyon with possession for Hill Murray. Simbo Ndaye is visibly not thrilled. Cross for the Zephyrs and it would not work as that ball near Lindquist and Lindquist tries to dribble back into the box and unsuccessful. Here come the Pioneers. This is Andruzic. Upfield it goes, but only as far as the center line. As turning with this is Bwalki. Out of play to Matamidi. Substitutions for the Zephyrs. This is Ty Vall. Zephyr substitution number three, Ty Vall. Defenders, let's talk. Throw in for the Zephyrs with a two on lead, early stages, second half. Back to midfield, turned to Lindquist. Goes to Tyval. And now give and go brilliantly to Tyval as she'll cross it towards the middle of the field and in play, out of play, to Matamidi. Tyval looking to see who will throw it in. She'll do the honor. And a long throw, pinballs to Hill Murray and Runyon. Out of play, to Hill, should be to Hill Murray, and it is. Long throw for the Pioneers, intercepted by Lindquist. And now given on to Luger. As that one pops on into the box from Luger. And just over five minutes into the second half, it is still Matamidi with a 2-1 lead. Luger will head that one down. And Matamidi establishing possession near side. This is Bwalki. Bwalki intercepted. And she gets it right back. Bwalki goes over to Broughton. And Bwalki get it, or got it back, I should say. As that one is crossed in by Bwalki. Towards Tyval. And now the Pioneers struggle to maintain control. Ball touched on. The Pioneers with control near side. This is Runyon. Switches fields. And Matamidi with possession at midfield. And now the ball blocked by the Pioneers who look for offense of their own. Touched forward just out of the reach of Luger. As that one is dispatched out of play. 
Hill Murray throw with 33 and change left to go. Far side, touched down in play to, Mat to Matamidai. Ball advanced to Barry, who scored the first goal of the game of any kind for Matamidai as this one is advanced towards Runyon. And Paddleford in the other direction. Matamidai having trouble with the offense in this exchange as it gets to Tyval. Tyval intercepted in play. It went to Olsen. As Matamidai with Lindquist. Lindquist advances this, and it goes to Barry. Audrey Barry! post for a 3-1 lead. Barry's second goal of the game. Back underway we go. And now the ball intercepted by Andruzic. Andruzic trying a center-esque feed. Not working though. And now Matamidai turning and going. Wolfsfeld. And back in for Hill Murray. As they are now two goals down and slowing things down because of a free kick. Back underway we go. Ball pinballs back to midfield. And now Matamidai with control up the far side. They go with a 3-1 lead. And Hill Murray entering the game as the top seat, or the uh, best team in the Metro East by what I'll call a half game over Simley. Simley and Hastings played earlier. I believe it was a nil-nil draw. And that was before this Hi, one started. Substitution for Matamidai, Caitlin Moltz on. And Zephyr's substitution, number 17, Moltz Zayai. Hill Murray trying to establish possession. And they can't get anything going in the uh, early ten, or the uh, first 10 minutes of the second half. Might have misspoke. Now inside the box come the Pioneers. Quick shot in on goal. And Jensen with the save. So Hill Murray flashing some signs of, of life. But still down two with a half hour left. And it seemed like Hill Murray took about this length of time in the, in the uh, first half to sort of wake up. But possession is Matamidai's to work with. This is Tyval over to Broughton. And out of play it goes. Substitution for Matamidai is Hillstrom. No, check that. Stockness. Zephyr substitution, number 10, Zephyr Stockness. Coming off the pitch is Audrey Berry, or uh, I'll check that again, <laughs> time ball, excuse me. Just past 10 minutes into the second half. 
S. Hill Murray looking for two goals to tie. Up the far side come the Zephyrs out of play. To Bautamidae. Out of play, Matamidai still with possession. As the ball thrown in. And dispatched out of play. Now the ball kept in by the Zephyrs. And out of the facility, maybe onto the varsity baseball field, went that soccer ball. Here comes Matamidi, far touch line. It turns into a goal kick. It will be Humbert kicking the ball back into play. Ball, pinball is the way of the Zephyrs as this one is worked ahead by Wolsfeld. Wolsfeld's shot was intercepted and it hooks back to midfield where Matamidi will resume control. Stockness to throw it in. Stockness was looking for Lindquist and found her eventually as Lindquist works her way to the middle of the field. Lindquist with a shot that got blocked on the way in. Rebound try would not go. Looking for that was Wellsville. And it fell to her. After the, the original shot from Lindquist there, blocked by two pioneers, uh, Wolsfeld says, look what I found, and she couldn't put it in the back of the net. Ball out of play, it'll go to Hill Murray. When we resume play. After an injured Zephyr is discovered. I believe that's Wolsfeld coming up lame on the foot as she comes off. Back underway we go. As this one comes ahead to Nast, and Nast could not maintain control. This is Wol uh, We'll check that Hillstrom as that ball is shouldered down near Runyon for Hill Murray. Runyon looking to dipsy do through two. She could not. She has to dump it off near side. And the Pioneers ran, or far side rather, the Pioneers ran out of room. As the ball's thrown back into play by the Zephyrs. Final game of the Metro East Girls Soccer uh, Conference season. In this top half of the round robin, as it were. Out of play. To Matamida. Quick throw in. Just out of the reach of Wolsfeld. She got, or got to Broughton, whistle, and we'll go the other way. And we'll go the other way with a free kick coming from Bridget Blaney. No, throw into Blaney. We'll get it right. And that ball sent sailing over Brook Nast's head. Matamidi with control. Substitutions coming for Matamidi, including Kate Holst and Audrey Berry back in. Audrey Berry looking to get tricky, so to speak, as she's looking for a third goal. Stockness with the throw as that ball touches down. And that will go out of play for a goal kick. 
as we are just past 15 minutes into the second half. Goal kick coming, and remember, any player can take that goal kick in Minnesota State High School soccer. Does not have to necessarily be the goalkeeper if you don't want to. And now Hill Murray with possession, trying to hook it back towards midfield, or uh, back to a spot where they could control. However, Matamidi with control, courtesy of Lindquist. And now this ball touches down, Vargas with it out of play. And Hill Murray with, or uh, check that Matamidi with the throw. Stockness down the line. Got it over near Barry, cross. Out of play, substitutions for Matamidi are Savannah Stockness and Maddie, Mc Maddie McCoy. Or, yep. Coming off the pitch is Lindquist. And I believe Paddleford also. Kick back into play, 22 and change left to play. As it's out of play. And the ball should be Matamidis. It is throw in. And, er, it is thrown in, and the field was switched to the far side out of play to Hill Murray. Ball settles down after the quick game of Pong for a pioneer possession as this one is kicked on near Luger. And guided across the midfield stripe by Vargas. And now Hill Murray in business. This is Brooke Nast crossing. And the field switch on for the Pioneers. But you've got to get the second goal before you can even think about the third. The Pioneers have 21 minutes and change to make that happen. As the ball goes to Matamidi. Ball kicked into the box and covered by Humbert. Natalie Humbert has had herself a, a game. However, with the, uh, with the defense collapsing on three occasions thus far, uh, that all goes on Humbert at the end of the day. She's made the saves that she's had to make when uh, she's had to make them on several occasions. 20 minutes and change now left as Matamidi with control of the ball. Switching fields is Audrey Berry looking for a trick of her own. Would it be too early to say that the hat trick would also be a treat? Don't know. However, Matamidi treating us to some great play as Stockness throws that one forward to Berry. Berry physically jostled off the ball. There was a thought of a handball for Matamidi there. Play continues as this one goes to Luger. Luger now to Nast. Nast looking for Luger near side. Got it there. And now bodies fly, but we maintain or we maintain play. Hillstrom back for Matamidi as Hill Murray plays Pong with the Zephyrs. Here come the Pioneers, far side of the field, and Matamidi rejects that. Past halfway in the second half, or three quarters of the way done. 
That's about a meet eye with possession far side. It goes to Hill Murray on the way out. You see Moldzahn there briefly as the ball thrown back into play. Hill Murray needing two and quickly. Luger to no pioneer in particular as that will go out of play should be to Hill Murray. It is not. They give the ball to Matamidi and the throw in courtesy of Hillstrom. Hillstrom gets it back cross into the box and Humbert will control that. By the way, I want to mention a, or want to shout out quickly, a quick thank you to those who are tuning in on Facebook Live to this very match. We appreciate you as well as those tuning in on Channel 19 and 801 in HD as well. Glad you've chosen to spend part of your Tuesday night with us. As a throw in on the near side for Hill Murray. Leads to a corner for the Pioneers. Or is it? It is. Taking the corner is Maya Geese who is the lone Hill Murray goal scorer. This evening thus far. Quick shot in, pin balls back to midfield after it was blocked. Now the bodies are flying as, as we get down towards the final 17 minutes. Hill Murray now with possession in their offensive end. And the Pioneers keep possession. Throw in towards Andruzic. And across into the box goes out of play. And it should be a Matamidi goal kick with a possession or with a, su a substitution coming. Paddleford back into play off the substitution. And it is a goal kick. Remember, anyone on the field can theoretically take a goal kick. Doesn't have to be a goalie. In case that concept is new to you for the first time. Here come the Zephyrs, cross, or cross towards the box. And I believe that's Broughton looking for teammates. And the Pioneers will come out of this looking the better as Luger will advance to midfield. Hill Murray has to be careful on the break like this to uh, avoid the offside positions. Near side, was it kept in? Yes. Hill Murray with possession on the edge of the box. That, I believe, was Nast. Cross right in on goal. It'll go to Jensen with just over a football quarter in duration. Remaining, Matamidi with a 3-1 lead. Now Matamidi with control as they sprint up field. And the ball settled down near Mickey Stockness. Her sister Savannah also playing on the defensive core for the Zephyrs. Mickey the senior and Savannah the freshman. As that one kicked back into play towards Luger. Luger looking to turn and go. Out of play, it'll go to Hill Murray. I'm consistently looking for that linesman's flag and uh, not finding it. 
Uh, and as a former official, uh, you trust that sort of thing in the center of the field like that. Upfield come the Pioneers and the chance goes begging as Jensen will control. Ball kicked on. And the ball pinballs after a couple of nice headers to Hill Murray. Nast up the far side. And Hill Murray has to start thinking about a second goal quick. Up the far side. Hill Murray looking to establish a cross. Low, out of play, should be a corner. It is. But it's a corner on the far side. That'll be taken by Geese. Geese, far post. Not going to work. Did they draw another corner? It would seem like Hill Murray have done just that. They have. Near side corner. I'm not so sure, but we'll play on. Geese, once again, near post this time. Geese gets it back. Geese, looking for teammates. Out of bounds, should be to, to Matamidi. And it's not, we play on. Hang on here, whistle stops play. And it should, it, the original restart to play should have been a Matamidi throw. However, we'll play on Geese with a free kick as Matamidi wants four substitutions. Geese, far post, just over the net. Substitutions and mass for Matamidi. Waldsberger among the substitutes for Matamidi. as the goal kick set to be taken. And Matamidi looking to send it to the house with a two goal lead. Hill Murray looking to change the, the script, so to speak. However, back up field come the Zephyrs. Only as far as center or midfield. Did a whistle stop play? It did. As we take in to the 30th minute, a free kick coming from Maya Geese. Right on the edge of the midfield circle. It is what golfers would call a worm burner along the ground. Out of play, corner, looking for the flag. Yes. It's the official's mentality. Got to look for, got to look for a flag where I can find one. That's why linesmen are are there. Not a bad thing or a good thing, just a fact. Geese will take the corner kick and back to Geese on the near side. Geese looking for a cross, another corner. And Geese has got to start thinking about the far post. They've had, Hill Murray has had success tonight. Low line drive kick, dispatched out of the box. 
where Lozano was among those pioneers in the play. Throw in for Matamira here on the near side. Lily Lindquist comes back in. You see our, uh, our quick blast of our social media profiles from Twitter to Facebook and beyond. Middle of the field, Matamidi with control and they're looking to put this game on ice. Upfield it'll go and controlled by Humbert. Eight and three quarters minutes to play as that ball is kicked back in on the far side. And uh, Paddleford kicked it on for the Zephyrs. Here comes Matamidi back past center with Lindquist. Lindquist switches fields and a quick cross right into a goal kick situation for Humbert with eight and a dime to play. You see the Zephyr bench not at all concerned with a two goal lead thus far. Now upfield comes Lozano. Lozano looked to, to feed one that eventually got back to Vargas. Matamidi advances forward to midfield, but no further. As that came to run in, She's running, or she runs into a uh, couple of Zephyr defenders, and the ball winds up in the hands of Paige Jensen. Thirty-third minute of the second half, upcoming. Madamita looking to play keep away in the final seven minutes here with a two-goal lead with which to build from. Up the far side. And loose ball goes to the, the Pioneers. And just like that, the Zephyrs regain control. Foul near the box goes uncalled. And we'll play on. Substitutions for Matamidi, including Krista Tyval and Erica Broughton. Throw in on the far side as we get back to play with six minutes left. Paddleford down the line. In play near the far corner flag. Looking for a flag, got one, Matamidi <laughs> with control. And I'm looking for a directional flag there just to make sure that we have uh, the, the uh, correct team with possession. That's not necessarily a bad thing for those of you who regularly watch varsity football, we'll say. Matamidi with control, that one advanced by Lindquist. And far touch line, still in play, crossed! And two Matamidi Zephyrs hit the deck as it's out of play to Hill Murray. Final five minutes. And now Matamidi would have to hurry. This goes to Tyval. And upfield to Waldsberger. Waldsberger with a nice ball defended well by Hill Murray. And a substitution for Matamidi. 
we'll see Hall or Halatsis among others. Four and a half minutes. And the ball headed down and out of play to Hill Murray. Ball rainbows towards Nast out of play to the Pioneers. Fast break offense off the referee, but it'll go the other way. It should, I should say off the linesman. Brought on by Blaney. No further as she's pushed to the turf, no call. And now the frustration stuff and the ticky tack stuff start, starting to pick up as the ball advanced the way of the Zephyrs far side. Just out of the reach for the Zephyrs and I believe a corner kick is coming. Three minutes and 25 seconds to play. Corner kick indeed coming. That's a low kick. Didn't even threaten the goal. And that shot from Tyval leaves, or almost left the facility. Final three minutes to play. And it looks like Matamidi will, will go to their sixth win of the season in the Metro East while Hill Murray will suffer their second defeat to go with three ties and five wins on the season. This has been a fun one, uh, and, and the fun has come in spurts. Two twenty-five to go as this ball is headed down, and pinball being played in the midfield. And now this one eventually found bodies fly by the Pioneers, out of play. It'll go to Matamidi. Substitute coming in is Wolfsfeld. Two minutes to play. And Broughton gets around her Defend, or her def defender, and actually check that, that's Savannah Stockness. Far side now, does Matamidi keep it in? They don't. Goes to the Pioneers, quick throw. Buck 40 left. And now Hill Murray working ahead, out of play. To Hill Murray, 80 seconds to go. Up the far side, still in play. And it'll go to Matamidi. And that should just theoretically about do it. Free kick for Matamidi though, as a minute remains. Final minute and the free kick. And the ball pinball is down in the middle or in the middle of the field. Now it takes some odd bounces and leaves the field. Hill Murray with a throw. Courtesy of Lozano. 30 seconds left. Lozano got it back and gets around one. Her cross. Possibly intended for Ella Runyon. Goes opposite field. 15 to go. And Matamidi will go to a sixth Metro East Conference Ten, win. Nine, eight, Hill Murray seven, will go six, to a second five, Metro four, East loss three, as two, the final horn one. will sound. That does it. 
Badamidi with a 3-1 victory. As they go 6-1-1 one one on the season, Hill Murray goes 5-2-3. and three. In the final game of the top half of the uh, Metro East we'll round robin. Also, shout out to the student managers. You're always working hard for the Zephyrs. Everybody drive home safely and have a lovely evening. Thank you. Hill Murray off the pitch, their second loss of the season as Matamidi goes to 6 1 and 1 on the year. It was a fun one. Audrey Berry with two goals tonight really impressed me. I market her as our player of the game if given a vote. Uh, but the goaltending for Mount Amidi also stellar with Paige Jensen as well. It was a fun one over, overall. And uh, Mount Amidi with a 3-1 victory as we will wrap it up from here at George Smith Field on the campus of Matamidi High School. It is Matamidi with a 3-1 victory over the Hill Murray Pioneers in a game that produced fireworks. And from Matamidi High School, this is Jeff Disher saying so long for those of, of uh, us who worked on this one. We say so long to you and have a great rest of your Tuesday evening.